Why the Chica Khalsa? Why the Chica Fadeh? The year 2010 is a year that will live in the minds of sick, gener sick youth and sick people for generations to come. It is a year that the sick youth reawoken after 20 years of inactivity. But this isn't the first time this has happened. After the loss of our sick nation in 1849, every sick generation, every 20 to 30 years, has awoken to injustice around them and has attempt, attempted to correct the wrongs that they see around them, as we do today. In 1947, it was the Sikhs who broke the back of the British Raj by giving more than 80% of all sacrifices in the freedom movement. But yet today, very few know of, know of these facts. In the 70s, it was a sick youth who reawoken again to the injustices around them, and a new movement was started demanding equal rights for Sikhs and equal rights for Punjab. This movement was labeled separatist, and the most ruthless and criminal methods were used to suppress it, including genocide. And now, we the Sikh youth have reawoken to the injustices inflicted upon our people, and through education, and all legal means, we have started a process to obtain justice for our people, and it is hoped by some that very few people will know of this, but they are wrong. These same people wonder why. Why are we, sick youth, across the world, reawakening to this? Why do we even care what happened in the past, and why do we care for our people nearly halfway around the world? The answer is very simple. It is our nature as Sikhs to fight for what's right. It is our essence as Sikhs to stand up for what's just. And today, it is this generation's turn to do the right thing. It is our duty. In 2010, the Sikh Kamala, a minister in the current Indian government, visited this Canada. But in 1984, Kamala, then an MP, was witnessed directing mobs to burn Sikhs alive in the streets. He was witnessed directing mobs to attack a Gurdwara, and he was witnessed organizing and controlling the mobs. As a Canadian, I say it is unacceptable for this man to enter our country, let alone meet our elected officials, and I say it is our responsibility as people, as citizens, and as Sikhs to make sure it doesn't happen. Shocked and confused by our organizations, our oppressors overseas wrote it off as a fluke. They said the sick gener next sick generation does not have the determination, the knowledge, or even the vision to do anything besides maybe organize some, you know, demonstrations. They said that we would quickly fizzle away, that it was a one-time, one-off event. They laughed at our efforts, and to show their complete lack of disrespect, within weeks of his visit to Toronto, Gamal Nath was sent to America, almost daring us to say, hey, let's see what you can do now. But upon his arrival to the U.S., Kamal Nath was met with an appropriate gift from the Sikh nation. He was given a summons to appear before a U.S. judicial system to explain his role in the 1984 genocide. And as a people, and as citizens of foreign nations, I want to just say I was proud to be a member of a Western democracy at that point. Slap heard from the US to India, Kamal Nath quickly cancelled his visit to the UK because at this point he had gotten the message that in the year 2010, the Sikh youth, the Sikh nation was reawakening and it was not going to be silenced. It is said that those who forget their history are doomed to repeat it. It is important to know that in the first Anglo Sikh Wars in 1845, the Sikh armies were not defeated on the battlefield. They were defeated from within. The British armies were defeated on all major fronts. The British generals were burning all their state documents in the fear that they may fall into sick hands. The British army was preparing their retreat routes. But then, two Dogre Sikh generals, who had made secret deals with the British, refused to reinforce the Sikh lines. They refused to attack British lines that were exposed to them and they passed on crucial information which led to the eventual defeat of Punjab. It is important to learn from these mistakes. In the year 2010, we have seen again the next generation of Dohal Sikhs walk amongst us. 
In June 2010, the Sikh Nation planned to introduce a petition in the House of Commons demanding Canada live up to its hard-earned international human rights reputation and recognize the campaign killings of Sikhs as genocide. Sukh Daliwal and Andrew Kenya worked diligently with Sikhs for Justice and other Sikh organizations to have this petition read in the House of Commons and start a process to obtain justice for the Sikhs. It was believed that with three other Sikh MPs in the Liberal Party, there would be no problems in getting Liberal support. But as of 1849, in the year 2010, the Sikh nation was not defeated from outside, it was defeated from within. The wannabe bottle of Canada, Gurbaks Mali. The wannabe actress, Ruby Dalla. Barack Obama, Nabdi Baines, refused to support the petition. With the Durga Sikhs now refusing to support the petition, the Liberal leader made a completely unjust and despicable statement against it. It was believed at this point that no one would have the courage to read the words that was written in the petition in the House of Commons. But the Sikh community isn't that weak. We do not give up that easily. And the day of the reading, over a thousand six traveled from across Canada to witness history in the making. But again, they tried to stop the momentum. They refused readings in the house for that day alone of all petitions and moved on to other business promptly. It was believed that perhaps if we stop their momentum here, they will not move forward. That if we stop this new generation of six, and dishearten them and show that their efforts will not achieve anything, they may go home quietly, but that is not the case. And against all odds, the next day, Sukh Dhaliwal read the words that will live in Sikh history forever. He said the killings of Sikhs in 1984 was indeed genocide, that the Indian state must give justice to the Sikhs, and all those killers today walking free in India must be punished for the crimes they committed against Sikhs. Sikhs for Justice has given a memorandum to the UN demanding that the killings of Sikhs be recognized as genocide and also demanding why or asking why the nations who have signed the UN Declaration of Human Rights are refusing to live up to their obligations. It is those signatory nations, including Canada, which are obliged to stand up for the rights of the innocent, which are obliged to make sure that innocent minorities are not killed anywhere in the world. And it is their obligation, and our obligation as Canadian citizens to make sure this happens. And we are not demanding the UN explain to us why it is not happening today. It is said, those who forget history are doomed to repeat it. In 2000, when the then President Bill Clinton visited India, the Indian Army wanted to send a message of displeasure by executing 35 Sikh villagers in Kashmir. Clinton himself wrote in his first edition that he believed the execution or the genocide of these religious minorities was because of his visit. So this year, when President Obama planned to visit India, the army planned to send another message to the Sikh nation. In the middle of the night on November 5th, this year, members of the Rashtriya Rifles entered a village and started banging on the doors of only Sikh homes. They demanded all Sikh males come out immediately. And when the people refused, the soldiers started to kick at the doors trying to force their way in. But these Rashtriya Rifles did not realize that the next Sikh nation awakening had already started. Before they could execute their plan, a Sikh went on top of his roof and gave out a jabata that was heard out throughout the village. Within minutes, all neighbors started pouring out into the street. And as these villagers, armed with nothing but their will, approached these AK-7 holding Indian soldiers, the Indian soldiers dropped their weapons and ran in fear. And that night, a countless number of Sikh lives were saved and another genocide prevented. For you see, the work that you do here today is not just for Canada, or just for the Sikhs in Canada. 
The work that you do today wins the hearts and minds of six all across the globe. The six in Kashmir today know that their brethren in the Western world are watching. The six in Kashmir and all other parts of India know that their brethren in the Western world will defend them. And we today, as free citizens, have an obligation to make sure that nothing like November 1984 ever happens again. And it is our responsibility to punish those people that are responsible. The work that we do here today not only touches India and Canada, it touches the UK six, it touches the EU six, it touches the Australian six. And today we see, for the first time in nearly 20 years, a sick nation re-emerging, standing in solidarity with each other. And we will not stop until all our goals are achieved.